When we first heard that Google was coming out with their own smart display, which is a smart speaker with a screen, we were excited. We figured it would have all the bells and whistles, a camera, a large screen, all kinds of other stuff that you're seeing in other smart screens. However, this one doesn't have all that. It doesn't even have a camera. It's pretty tiny. And while we find it refreshingly simple in some ways, in other ways, we wish it had a bit more functionality. So here's the Google Home Hub, and here's it compared to the Amazon Echo Show. As you can see, it's tiny. If you look at the two side by side, you'll see that this has a much larger footprint than this little guy right here. Um, it's also pretty simple in a lot of other ways. Um, for example, it has really simple controls. Here's the mic on off button right here. And then right here is a little volume control, volume up and down. This fabric backing is one of four colors that you can choose from, including aqua. If you look at it next to my phone, the Samsung Galaxy S9, you'll see that it's not really that much bigger. However, there are a few things that I really like about this Google Home Hub. The first thing is, as you can see, it's actually showing pictures. It's connected to my Google Photos account, so it's showing up to 11 albums from my Google Photos that I pre-selected. There's another thing that we really like, and that is this little drop-down menu that is basically a control panel for your smart home. You can see that I can touch on lights, and it shows me which lights I have connected, and if I click on them, it can show me that I can turn them on or off right there. This is something we haven't seen before in a smart display and we find it really nifty. One unique thing about the Google Home Hub is that unlike other smart displays, it doesn't feature a camera. That's good news for those of you concerned about security, but if you want to do video chatting, you're out of luck. But what it does mean is that without the camera, you might feel more comfortable putting it on your nightstand next to your bed or even in the bathroom. Most people put smart displays in the kitchen which makes sense so they can watch recipe videos and other things. This would go well in the kitchen, however, it's a bit small for regular media consumption, which is a shame considering it comes with six months of free YouTube premium. Setting up the device is pretty much as easy as plugging it in. You'll need the Google Home app, which is free to download, and from there you can set up all kinds of things. You can connect streaming, music services, you can set up your voice match so that Google Assistant can recognize your voice over your significant others. You can even change the voice of the Assistant, and so much more. In a lot of ways, Google Assistant is smarter than Alexa. For example, yesterday I was randomly searching for a recipe on my phone. When I found the recipe I wanted, a notification popped up asking me if I wanted to send it to my Google Home Hub. If you're looking for quality sound with the Google Home Hub, sadly you're not going to get it. It falls somewhere between the Google Home and the Google Home Mini. It's not very loud and it's not going to fill a room. It's probably fine if you want to use it while cooking dinner, but all you audiophiles, you're probably going to want to have another speaker handy. Overall, we find the Google Home Hub simple and refreshing. We really like the digital photo frame feature and the smart home control panel. We do wish it had a bigger screen and bigger sound, but at $149, it's a really great deal and a great addition to any smart home.